Making an immortal character in either DC or Marvel is essentially making a bet with every other comic creator for the rest of time. You create a character that can't be killed, and in doing so, you create an unofficial challenge for everyone else, as they see if they can find a cunning loophole that lets them kill the unkillable. With these demises always being mammoth moments, there's a clear level of preparation and calculation that generally goes into these moments. So with that in mind, I'm Will for Culture, and here are 10 immortal comic characters who actually died. Number 10, Calibac, Superman, Darkseid 1, and Injustice Year 1, 24. Of all the immortal DC villains, Kalibak is perhaps the single most unfortunate of all of them. This is because, though he's seldom a major villain in any storyline, he's died twice in various series and spin-offs, despite being supposedly immortal. The first of these deaths comes in the ever underestimated Superman Darkseid series, where we see a version of the Man of Steel who is loyal to Darkseid murder Kalibak in order to appease his bloodthirsty master. For Injustice, however, matters are significantly more simple. In issue number 24, Kalibak attempts to invade Earth with his forces, seemingly unaware of the fact that this universe's Superman is one who's not going to put up with that kind of tomfoolery. And he gets murdered. GG, you lost. Number 9, Deadpool, Return of the Living, Deadpool number 4. While Deadpool has officially died more than once, in fact many times, dying several times in the main Deadpool series and, well, you get the idea, perhaps the most poignant has to be his death at the end of the suitably cheesy named Return of the Living Deadpool run. This is because, despite its silly name, the series closes on one of the most surprisingly touching moments of the entire Deadpool death collection. After accidentally making a zombie apocalypse far worse by accidentally turning the zombies into more versions of Deadpool with his blood, the merc with a mouth attempts to make up for his crime crimes by wiping the hordes of himself out. As such, when he's given the chance to infect himself with a disease that will spread to every other Deadpool, he naturally takes the opportunity, despite knowing that this will also end his own life. Though it's tragic, it leads to an undeniably badass finale where the hero single-handedly destroys countless versions of Deadpool, including himself. Number 8, Ulysses Bloodstone, Rampaging Hulk number 8. Ulysses Bloodstone is the biggest badass that the Marvel Universe rarely ever features. To be fair, there's a pretty justifiable reason we haven't seen him in any recent comics or events, and that reason is, as you've likely predicted, that he is extremely dead. Bloodstone's arc in comics revolved around him getting revenge for the death of his tribe, who were murdered en masse by the very powerful and evil Hellfire Helix, a creature from another universe that aimed to study and take over the Earth. After a long and arduous road, Ulysses is kidnapped by an evil organization suitably named The Conspiracy, who aimed to reform the Helix by putting all of its pieces back together, which involved removing the shards trapped in Bloodstone's chest that had kept him alive all these years. Despite this, Ulysses did not fully die, having absorbed some of the residual energies of the shard into his flesh. When the Helix was reformed, Ulysses saw his chance and grabbed the gem, entering into it and destroying the Hellfire Helix once and for all, though ultimately sacrificing sacrificing himself in the process. Number 7, The Monitor, Crisis on Infinite Earths. The death of the Monitor was perhaps the biggest comic death of the 80s and remains one of the most surprising demises in DC history. As a being who is able to access almost limitless amounts of energy, the Monitor is about the most powerful a character can get, and thus his death came completely from left field in Crisis on Infinite Earths. This is made doubly surprising due to the person who killed him, as his murderer was none other than a hero named Harbinger, who the Monitor had raised since she was a child. After being manipulated by the anti-monitor's forces, Lila blasts the monitor to death, traumatizing herself in the process. And so the functionally unkillable monitor was actually killed. Number 6, Thanos, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 5, Number 6. Thanos' time in the Marvel comic universe involves him dying an obscene amount of times for a character who is, in theory, supposed to be immortal. After being beheaded in Thanos' legacy, the unlucky purple giant is resurrected by his loyal team of villains after some shenanigans where they try to find his missing head. Hilariously, Thanos would be murdered once more a mere five issues after his resurrection, in even more dramatic form than he was taken down prior. The Mad Titan would be attacked by the collective forces of the Guardians of the Galaxy and the Dark Guardians and impaled by a deflected missile which would then explode and create a black hole. Though Thanos is capable of shaking off many types of injuries, being absorbed into a black hole is not one of them, leaving the villain dead once more, for now at any rate. 
Number five, Galactus. Galactus the Devourer, number six. Much like Thanos, Galactus is another undying entity who gets offed with an unshakable level of regularity. The most dramatic of these deaths is the one that takes place in the final issue of Galactus the Devourer series, which sees the Devourer of Worlds transmuted into energy, essentially dissolving him out of existence. To make matters even more dramatic, this death comes about due to Galactus being betrayed by the Silver Surfer, who would turn the villain's own energy siphoning machines on him, weakening the planet killer to a point that he could be destroyed by the combined efforts of several superheroes. Galactus would be brought back to life by Franklin Richards sometime later in order to defeat a villain named Abraxas, who had been freed into the universe when Galen had died. Better the devil you know than the devil you don't, and all that. Number four, Orion. Final crisis number one. Usually the one ordering deaths instead of dying himself, Orion aims to even this ratio in the first issue of Final Crisis by dying in literally the first scene he appears in. Found by Dan Turpin, the man who would go on to be possessed by Darkseid, a heavily beat up Orion begins to ramble what sounds like absolute nonsense, but is actually a warning that the new gods were, in fact, still alive. The radium bullet used to kill Orion would become the most important part of the series, as Batman would later utilize it to kill Darkseid, yet another immortal old god. Interestingly, it is later revealed that Darkseid himself fired the initial bullet that killed Orion, meaning that, in a sense, Darkseid did kind of commit suicide, which is even weirder to get your head around than two immortal gods dying in one comic run. Number three, Butcher, Green Lantern Annual, Volume 5, 2. The Butcher is an unusual example of an immortal character dying in that, by all means, there should be no way the creature could possibly die. This is because the Butcher is an entity that is supposed to be the physical embodiment of rage and anger, and thus, in theory, should be literally indestructible, because someone in the universe is always going to be angry. But this is proved wrong when the Butcher and his other spirit pals were absorbed in order to create the White Lantern Rings needed to save the world, killing all of these beings in the process. While it is for a more than worthy means, it does feel a little weird that these undying and all-powerful creatures die en masse so easily, even if it is an admittedly badass looking scene. Number two, death, the Thanos Imperative 3. Seeing death itself die is a pretty big deal. This likely explains why we never see death die in the main Marvel Universe, but instead 10011, charmingly nicknamed the Cancerverse. The Cancerverse is named as such because, in order to try and prevent the death of their universe's Captain Marvel, the assorted heroes perform a ritual that kills death itself in their universe, meaning the characters within this world are fated to live forever. While this initially sounds pretty swell, the ritual also brings the evil old gods into the universe, who immediately corrupt the world's inhabitants, messing them up beyond belief. Essentially, the death of death leads to the sort of nightmarish horoscape that Lovecraft would consider a wet dream, and nobody should be all that surprised. Number 1, Morpheus, Sandman, Volume 269. Morpheus' death in the Sandman series is, to this day, one of the saddest deaths in comic history, and one of the most surprising, as while we'd become aware that the immortal Endless could be felled, it seemed wildly unlikely that our very own protagonist would see his demise before the end of the series. But die he does, as, after having his world ravaged by the witchy, kindly ones, Morpheus decides that he is ready to finish his time as Lord of the Dreamworld, asking his sister Death to kill him so he could retire in peace. Death agrees and Morpheus dies, with his young ward Matthew replacing him as the keeper of the world of dreams, though he would never totally replace the role that Morpheus had played for his bizarre and beloved extended family. And there you have it folks, 10 immortal characters who actually died. Feel free to drop this video a like if you enjoyed it, and drop me a follow on Twitter at you. I'm Will for What Culture, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.